for the month of October, we'll be covering some of the greatest, and perhaps not so greatest, horror films ever crafted. Do they live up to their scares, or have they lost their fear factor over time? This week, we continue with Stanley Kubrick's classic adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining, starring Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. Heralded as one of the greatest horror films ever made, The Shining has left a large cultural impact that has broken beyond the genre itself. Is it really the macabre story of spine-tingling paranormal activity affecting an isolated family? Or is there something more? There have been movies! Movies and documentaries trying to dissect this film, trying to figure out what the heck it all meant. Uh, and from my understanding, Kyle, you hadn't seen this movie up until t the other day. Is that correct? That is that is 100% accurate. I was even exposed to the scene in Ready Player One without having experienced the prerequisite material. And, and now that I have, I'm like, okay, I get the shout out now. I see what went on there. You, you asked me if I had any questions in the pre-production, pre and, and I do have one standout question. What the f*** did I just watch? <laughs> what, what, what exactly? What, what just, what, what? Okay, first of all, I won't even get into like, hey, by the way, I'm interviewing for you for a job here, man. Listen, you look like the guy I want to hire, man. You're effing awesome. You're exactly the applicant I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell a story about a family getting murdered in the f***ing hotel you're about to work at. Sound like what I do in real life? Good. I thought so too, f***ing Stephen King. Anyways, then we go on to some other stuff. Listen, folks. I like a lot of things that happen in this movie. I'm not, not necessarily talking shit on the movie, but there are some certain things I just got to be like, no, Christ, really? Uh, come on. Well, depending no. on your interpretation of the film, that could also be a red herring. Ooh, that's that's a good point, Demos. I like that. There, there are many different interpretations uh, of this film. Some, like I said at the beginning of the episode, some are, they've made entire films trying to dissect this film. Room 237, which came out a couple years ago. Some theories are crazier than others. Like, The Shining was really Stanley Kubrick's elaborate film where he apologized for helping fake the moon landing and how the film is full of symbolism about that from Danny Torrance's Apollo 11 shirt to Room 237. How far is the moon from the Earth? Approximately 237,000 miles. That must and you know what lives on the moon? Naked chicks. What the? F anyway. I, I guess that's why they're decomposing. The lack of atmosphere. Oh, geez. I, but God damn it, Demos. That was actually a good one. But that, hey, by, by the way, something else that I'm not buying off the bat. This kid has, has, has an imaginary friend named Tony living in his mouth. And he talks to like this every now and again. Um, this is the first time he's seen a doctor about that. Okay, that's a tough sell too. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Oh, they yeah. do establish. They do, they do say that they were aware of it for three years. Yeah, three years. That kid's screaming face has haunted me to this day. <laughs> Anytime it cuts to Danny Torrance screaming. That was more effective than any jump scare that I see in movies nowadays. I dare you to disagree with me. You can have a nice, beautiful movie scene and just cut to that, that face. And it instantly makes it the scariest thing ever. You complete me. And I just had... Shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. I wrote you 365 letters. I wrote you every day for a year. You wrote me? Yes. Winds in the east. Miss coming in. Like something is brewing. About to begin. Can't put me finger on what lies in store. I feel what's to happen. All happened before. I'm sorry, where was I? This, like The Exorcist, it's relatively jump scare free. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, certainly. I, I would argue even The Exorcist, um, when, when uh, she's in the attic with the candle, it goes poof, is the biggest jump scare of the two movies. And that was kind of lame. <laughs> 
But I'm still saying that the, the way that it flashes certain images in this movie are, are far more effective. It's a jump scare, but you don't get the release and have to build up the tension again. This, right. this tool maintains that tension, amplifies it. Accurate. I did want to touch upon uh, the, the, the biggest uh, controversy behind this, one of the biggest controversies behind this film, and it's the fact that author Stephen King was, let's just say, displeased with Stanley Kubrick's final product. After having read the novel, I can understand that perspective. <laughs> I can definitely understand that perspective. His biggest criticism with the movie is also, oddly enough, my biggest criticism of the movie. And this is where Demos actually jumps right off the gate and mentions some of the negatives before he starts praising it later on. It's the fact that in the novel, there is... Um, the, the Jack Torrance is a very different type of character. He starts off with you um, connecting with him. He's an all-around decent guy. And you see his decline throughout the novel as he's uh, possessed by the spirits, etc., etc., etc. And even leads up to, spoiler alert for the book, a moment of redemption for him at the very end. In Kubrick's The Shining played by Jack Nicholson, who is terrific in the film. But the man starts off two steps away from crazy. Yeah. You don't really connect with this character and see the, the tragedy of, of his downfall. It's even worse in the European version of the film, which is 20 minutes shorter, and actually cuts out some of the scenes uh, of Jack and his family before the, the, the steady decline. Most importantly, one scene where he's eating breakfast in bed and starts mentioning how he feels like he's already been to this hotel, which I thought was kind of important to yeah. what plays out later on missing in the European mm -hmm. version. I, I would have liked to have at least connected with, with Jack a little bit more beforehand. Yeah, but I'm sure the European version left in the scene that has that part where your uh, uh, olive oil looks like she's about ready to walk in on on like the bear, uh, some Berenstain bear performing some sex act to a British butler. What the hell was that about? I, <laughs> what? I, I anyways. People I, have no. been asking that question for many many years. <laughs> it's a dog costume, oddly enough. Oh, that's a dog. Uh, no, that doesn't make it any better. Um, man's uh, best friend. <sighs> we ain't that friendly, mother. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he liked it rough. <laughs> oh, don't you dare! Laugh at that. Dun, dun, dun. What I'm seeing when, whenever I watch it, I feel like going into the movie, I just thought um, that he was just a, a, a guy, you know, that was just taking a job. I mean, you know, I mean, that's that's generally what I looked at, and, and we we get bits and pieces of this incident that happened. We don't know necessarily how long ago it was. We just know that Danny dislocated his shoulder and that was when Tony appeared. It's a defense mechanism because he's scared of his father. I mean, ultimately that's what Tony is. But we realize, you know, as we continue to watch that it was an accident. The mom says it was an accident, you know, then he had a little bit too much to drink. Then he hasn't had a drink since. So we see he's trying to do what is what is necessary. And then they they even say there's not a drop of alcohol in the whole place. So you're like, okay, sweet. Jack's gonna be Jack's gonna be fine. And then he starts to have these conversations with Lloyd, and he's drinking and he's responding to the alcohol that he is drinking. So as far as I'm concerned, Jack did a great job of landing Jack. Like the, 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 the character was, it was rich with the little screen time that he had, because honestly, when you think about it, we focus on, we focus on Danny a lot. We focus on Danny's relationship with his mother a lot. Jack Nicholson wasn't on the screen a whole lot, but when he was there, because look, they played a lot of scenery. We had a whole lot of the scat man. When Jack was on the screen, he, owned it he owned it you wanted to hear every word that came out of his mouth and we've seen now that everyone has been holding on to his words because his one-liners are thrown all over the place throughout human history so now we gotta we gotta think about we gotta take jack nicholson to the court of human contribution because so many people 
have have been zinging his one liner. Here's Johnny. I mean, look at how much have been pulled from this movie. It was an experience. That's for damn sure. I <laughs> listen. I um, I I I like. I I feel like I saw some of the symbolism there. And and listen, before I before I, I go on with the concerns about it, there were in fact some things that this movie nailed Ron Jeremy style. I loved some of the production aspect. The kid riding around in his big wheel in the hotel was f***ing boss. I've, of course, seen a few scenes of it throughout the years. I mentioned it when The Exorcist that there's some scenes from that, like in The Godfather or any thoroughly classic movie that's been around for decades. Uh, you're just by accident going to see some scenes that are going to be familiar with or without having seen Ready Player One even, okay? Um, but, like, you've seen some moments where the little kid, you know, little kids riding around on the big wheel. You always see the one at the very end where the last one where he goes, and there's the two girls, which, by the way, still creepy as <laughs> Anyways, no, but that device, I thought, was a great suspension as well. And where I would draw a comparison to The Exorcist, as you had mentioned in that demo, is that The Exorcist used bees as a sound effect. I couldn't help but notice that the, the wheels of the big wheel hitting along the, uh, the, 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 the floor of the hotel where there wasn't carpet and the sound definitely set to create some sort of a a mood or tension to him rappling around the hotel the cinematography in this film is is terrific it was yeah. one of the very first films to utilize a very new invention called steady cam so it allowed these long unbroken tracking shots it really helped layer the hotel the overlook hotel as this very immersive place and really drive up the atmosphere I spent the longest time trying to figure out why on earth Tony hasn't gone to AA yet, okay? He keeps spending the whole f***ing evening talking about red rum. I'm like, listen, he's too young, you little shit. Get out of his mouth. Go down, get Lloyd to serve you a drink. I know you're supernatural. You see Lloyd there just like Mr. Torrance does. Do your thing. Get that. Get back in the boy's mouth. You'll be there when he's awake. Won't even know what happened, and you'll shut the hell up. Oh, wait, that's what red rum is, dear Christ. Another instance of mirroring. Yeah, I was definitely one that got caught by the reveal on that. Hey, if I'm a dumbass, that's just life. But what's the big line? That's so famous. Here's Johnny. Okay, listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that wasn't deliver well delivered and creepy in his own right. But how many people, and I'll be the only one who holds my hand up, I'm okay. How many people thought it was creepier when he started about, I'll huff and puff and blow your f***ing house down while he's chasing her down? That freaked me out a lot more. Uh, no, I got one for you, bro. When he's in the room and, and, and she comes in and she sees the papers and sees that he's been writing, you know, uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So they're walking out. Now she's got the bat. You know, she's she's walking back. She just wants to leave. He's walk, following her out. And he looks her in the face and says, I just want to bust your f***ing head in. That right there? I hurt you. Bruh. Like he looked her dead in her eyes and said, I just want to bust your f***ing head in. But kept on going. He kept talking. Like and she so so if you weren't paying attention, you would have completely missed that. That man was dead serious when he said that. And this is well before he even had the axe. So yeah, that right there to me was like I mm -mm, the, the staging of that scene, once again, is something I have to point out. Any a lot of modern horror films, even horror films back in the day, would have taken the easy route in the staging of that scene. They would have had her flipping through all the all the pages freaking out and suddenly she would turn around jump scene he's there no 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 they take the harder approach that you see him approaching the whole time behind her it's building suspense and then what does it do it starts going up the stairs slowly step by step you feel the height of that staircase and what is at stake that that is superb filmmaking yeah, you're absolutely right. And what was it we talked about with The Exorcist, right? They cue you in every way to let you know, hey, by the way, demons is coming, and you ain't going to stop us from scaring you, right? It's that same arrogance I talked about, for lack of a better word. Yeah, okay. She's looking through all this. You know at some point, Mr. Thomas going to come in and know that she looked at this, otherwise we don't have we have a boring-ass movie, so go ahead. That's right. Oh, she's still looking through it. When's he going to come in? You know, I, you know he's coming. I'm telling you he's going to come. I'm telling you he's coming, but you're not going to stop me from making it intense. That same arrogance exists here, and I didn't need a cheap-ass jump scare. He walks in. He walks in the classroom smooth and slow like 
Charlie Brown. And it owns, bro. And this is the case where I think arrogant is is a good term because, and I, I don't I don't even mean it in a bad in a bad way. Um, Nor do but I. with Stanley Kubrick, he had he was <laughs> when it comes to uh, a perfectionist directors. Oh boy, Stanley Kubrick is, is the poster child. This film took a year to make. He drove his actors crazy to the point where Shelley Duvall was losing her hair. With, with the repeated takes, he was a perfectionist. So you knew that when he made a decision, when he showed something on camera, those were important elements. This is a confident motion picture. Yeah. A lot of people have made the claim, and this one that I disagree with, that there are no ghosts at all. There's nothing supernatural happening in this film whatsoever, and it's all in Jack's head. Uh, I disagree with that because there are certain moments in the film that are unexplained otherwise. Like, how did he escape from the locked pantry? The ghosts open the door. There's no physical explanation for that. That's uh, that's a moment of the supernatural intervening. Uh, and, and some other moments with Danny, his foreshadowing and so forth. Uh, but it is interesting to note that when Jack himself is having a lot of his supernatural moments, he's staring and talking to mirrors take a look at lloyd the the bar scene he's staring at a mirror the whole time that bathroom when he's talking to grady he's staring at grady and right behind him freaking Mm -hmm. mirrors once again it's continuing this theme of duality which mirrors are often used especially in horror films if there's nothing supernatural going on can somebody explain to me the uh involvement of mr carruthers in any portion of this damn film exactly there's supernatural going on. That's why Scatman is there. He explains everything. If you've got The Shining, if you've got a touch of The Shining, you can see, you can, you, you, you're in touch with stuff that everybody is not. And some people know that they got The Shining, and some people don't. And some people find out late, and some people never find out. Some people have The Shining, and they think that it's something else. He tells you that. My interpretation of that is, especially when he says that some people have The Shining, but they're not aware of it as Jack being that person, that he also has The Shining and is not aware of it and is seeing all these images that are technically not supposed to hurt you. Um, And he's just going crazy. It amplifies um, his degradation already. How much more sympathetic can you get for my girl Olive Oil in there? I I have to keep calling her that because every time I see her, that's all I can see. Shelly Duvall. The challenge of, first of all, dealing with a director that's wacky enough that you're taking so many takes and you're getting so stressed out that you're losing your hair, you also have to be the one person in the entire production that doesn't even get told about what The Shining is, has no inkling of it, or isn't touched by it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. You're just being effing affected by it. How much does that suck? Just saying. You know, Stephen King... And this is, from my understanding, one of his most recent uh, uh, criticisms of that film was Shelley Duvall. Uh, in, in the book, she is, a, once again, a very different kind of character. She's, uh, she's a far stronger personality in the book than the more meek, kind of mousy portrayal that Shelley Duvall does in the film. I actually think, honestly, that... Shelley Duvall is much more of a, of a badass in The Shining. By the end of it, she's like hitting Jack Nicholson over the head with a bat or attacking him with a knife, really putting up such a ferocious fight to protect her son. I think that makes her a much, much more dynamic character. I have to admit, I was not prepared for her to be dragging uh, Mr. Torrance in the dry storage locker. That's a good point, Demos. I never really thought of that until you made me break down the events, because to your point her overall disposition is that and she's just kind of reacting to the supernatural well i shouldn't say supernatural the extraordinary uh situation she finds herself in hey my husband who may or may not have choked my kid despite the fact he was a school teacher at some point i guess that's somehow a shot at the education system i don't know but you know she's through she's through all this and somehow keeps finding a way to survive perhaps she's not as meek as her initial disposition describes maybe she's somebody who's just learned to you know try to relax with all the various items of stress in her life i can only imagine what life with mr torrance was like 
So overall, do you guys believe that Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is required viewing? I like the film. I like what Jack Nicholson did with his character. He, like I said earlier, owned the screen. And I'm one to say, you know, I give Heath Ledger props because when he was the Joker, he owned the screen. He made me want him on the screen. And I was eating his words. Look at what I'm doing. So then... Whenever I look at what Jack did, Jack owned the screen so that whenever he was there, I just wanted to hear what he had to say. I wanted to see the facial expressions. I tried to raise my eyebrows like he did, and I almost pulled, popped a blood vessel in my eye. I'm not doing it again, but that man's eyebrows are ridiculous. They're and a character look, of their own. <laughs> really? really they're like they, they deserve their own Twitter account. And then looking at... You know, looking at his wife and, and, and what Shelley Duvall did with her character, you know, you talked about her. She was very meek. She had what we thought was that battered woman syndrome where she was really just in an abusive relationship. And she just seemed very, very small and very defeated through a lot of it. And the crazier he got, the more we saw her step up to take care of herself and her son. And that story in itself you know, having not been told anything about The Shining and not experienced anything, she's that, you know, she's the constant. We see that arc, we see her coming to her own. And then we have Danny, one of the creepiest kids I've ever seen in a film. Seeing how he interacted with the with the scat man, I mean, I'm never gonna let my children just walk off with some random stranger. It's not gonna happen. If I just met you, you're not walking off with my kids. One that offers ice cream? I don't care if y'all from my school. As a matter of fact, especially if y'all from my school, you asshole. So I'm just, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So that's not necessarily realistic within the Johnson house. If you're going to call yourself a movie buff, if you're going to say that you like horror movies and you want to be in the club that I'm in, The Shining is required. You know, I'll let you boy. First of all, this movie does do a lot of things very well. It has some great moments. Listen, you watch this movie. I literally saw faces uh, made by Jack Nicholson that were made in 1989 when he played the Joker and was nominated Best Supporting Actor for that performance. I don't think there's anybody that does a bad job of acting per se. <sighs> I think this movie was trying to do something special. I like that it was trying to, to, to have layers and trying to do a lot of stuff, which we picked up. But I have to tell you, folks, when it comes to how, how this eventually went down, it's very similar to how I felt at the end of Vertigo. Vertigo. It was just somewhat incomplete. Something felt off. So when I'm informed that uh, uh, Mr. King did not care for the movie, it's not a shock to me. Uh, as somebody who's not a horror fan in the first place, you're already in an, uh, aiming at a demographic that's pointing a different direction than I sit in anyway. Um, I'm not in a place to tell you it's required viewing. I'm not really going to necessarily recommend it. My reaction is much more lukewarm, but I do see the things in this movie that made it famous and their famous moments that I think happen to be in this movie. I don't necessarily think The Shining is goat material by any stretch. Stephen King infamously made his own miniseries in the 90s to do it right and... Those the interpretations of what was in the book in that were just as ridiculous like as I could imagine. Possibly because of the bad special effects. Well, those didn't help. I like snow. I like snow. It's such a beautiful thing. I like snow. I like snow. <laughs> Daddy, and the, the entire hotel explodes at the end. Big, you know. Hey, that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do prefer, I do prefer the more grounded version of the film. I like the fact that I like the fact that it, it is open enough to interpretation that some people can claim that there are no ghosts in it. Uh, I think that makes it kind of creepier, uh, in, in, from one point of view that the, the the cabin fever that this family is experiencing alone could drive them insane, could drive the father to try to kill his family. Now, add to that the possible the possibility that there are supernatural elements at play and it makes it even creepier. Do I believe that The Shining is required viewing? I'll tell you, yes. 
Uh, and this is from a guy that I've said it many times before. I am not a fan of of horror films for the most part, but but when they do it right, I I, I love them. Kyle, look, the reason that I like this movie is because every time I watch it, I see something or I notice something a little bit different. Even you said everybody did a good job acting in this film. So if everybody did a good job acting, then they achieved their goal. The movie was put together in a way that definitely makes you think you're you're not going to be. Look, they the only thing they're going to spoon feed you is explaining what The Shining is. Oh, right. Yeah. Everything else is left up to you. To, to 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 decide based on how you flow through the movie. There's certain things that I feel like just didn't quite land the way they needed to. Like the last shot of him freezing in the maze, I thought, and maybe this is because you've seen so many memes featuring that image in it. I don't know. I thought that this is this is this is what you're gonna end on, and then you're gonna transition to the ha- eh, okay. Um, but the, um, I don't know, like him talking to Lloyd, I, I wasn't really feeling that. Him talking to Grady was awesome, but I, I don't know. Something did not come together to me. Bro, like he's talking to Lloyd, and Lloyd is so cryptic. The conversation that he have, he's like, I like to know who's paying for my drinks. That doesn't need to be revealed to you yet, sir. Like he's com- he's being the most cryptic person out you want to know like what's going on with jack like what who is taking control and in the end the hotel owns him now i mean ultimately that's what it boiled down to which is why he's in the picture the hotel owns him now but i'm just i'm watching that in the relationship that he had with lloyd i'm like lloyd is giving him the liquid vibrations that he needs and then obviously the hair of the dog that bit me you got your lines there for days but I mean, just that interaction with Lloyd, that was to me him going through the door and officially losing his shit. Oh, yeah. No, that's how that's the device it was meant to do. And and I'll even give you credit for for the the depth of the the meaning of the line. Uh, um, was it your money's no good here mm-hmm. uh, uh, by request of the house? Yeah, no, I, I'm totally feeling and that. the hair of the dog that bit him is obviously the guy in the dog costume at the end. So. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, oh shit! I thought it was more of a gentle nibble, but okay. Oh, man! Like that, that. Thank you for bringing the dog back up. Like, what the f- is that even doing? What is that? Who? What? Furries weren't a thing in the, in 1980. What's going on right now? It was pe- people been furring for years, bro. Oh seriously? Oh yeah, man. That's the whole culture. Oh shit! Maybe I need to rethink this whole movie and my life. I- <laughs> Based on furries, I don't think you want to go on that journey. But never I don't. <laughs> no, I don't use this often, but don't at me if you're going to talk furries. Okay? <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you guys think that The Shining is required viewing? Or do you, did, you, did it leave you feeling lukewarm? Possibly because of all the blood that was there. We'll find out. Uh, let us know. It, wasn't blood, it was red rum, God damn it! Pay attention. <laughs> That wouldn't be as scary if that much red rum was heading my way. I'd have a great night. Are you kidding me? Anyway, <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments below. Hit us up with some suggestions. And TJ, thank you once again for, for joining us. Where can we find you, good sir? You can follow me on Twitter at TokyoJ. <laughs> That's T-O-K-E-O-J, people. Same thing on Snap. Every Tuesday night, I'm doing dinner time with that man right there, Kyle Nash. Of course, you can find me on Twitter at the SOTG. No, uh, <laughs> find me on Instagram as the same, the SOTG. Of course, find me on Facebook as the student of the game. Check out my writings on UCF Knights Football, uh, who, as of the filming of this, are now number 10 in the AP poll. Um, check that out on sportsmediapass.com, product of Blue HQ Media. And, of course, check out my writings on the Miami Dolphins, on the Dolphins Wire of USA Today. Uh, and when I'm not here, I'm doing things with that guy and my dudes, Jean-Luc and Cisco, as we set up dinner time. Yeah, good times there and all the way around, Demos. Okay, so TJ did the finger. Kyle did the crazy face. So what do I have left? The Nicholson eyebrows? Okay, you can, you can, you can find try me. Or others. I can do the Roger Moore 
version of it. <laughs> you can find me on Hilarity by default.com. We have fun stuff every week. You can find me on Twitter at default hilarity, Facebook and Instagram, hilarity by default. I'm looking forward. Next week, we're going to tackle a horror film that is not as, as, as known um, as Exorcist, The Shining, or, or Psycho. We're going to cover, and this might sound like an oxymoron to some people, we're going to cover a Disney horror film from 1980, same year as this film, The Watcher in the Woods. So make sure to tune in for that. And make sure to just check us out every Thursday where life is hilarious by default.